My trader goes, uh, he goes, all right, hop up there and show me how many pull-ups you can do. I go, I ain't gotta get up there, I would tell you. <laughs> Four. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> He goes, cool, man, give me three sets of four. I'm like, no, mother four. <laughs> Divide them up however you want to. Four is what I got, okay? And that's not even a real answer. Real answer is three, but I didn't want to say three because when you say three, your face automatically smiles and we in the gym with a bunch of dudes and shit. I didn't want to be like, three. <laughs> so I was like, four, because a four is a hard ass number. Four is gangster. Four feel like I was like season two of The Wire. Four. <laughs> Three is cute as shit. <laughs> try it. You're going to try it in the car on the way home. Anyway, try it right now. Try it. Try it. Three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Four. Three. <laughs> I think the weirdest thing I do, something I never expected myself to do, like now, Maybe, I mean, I'll say bougie, but I don't know if it's bougie, but like, I think the thing I do the most now that I, that I never thought I would do is I, like I drink sparkling water. <laughs> and I love it. I thought I would hate it. I used to hate it. I thought, I thought sparkling water tastes like flat Sprite. I still do. I think Perrier stands for flat Sprite. I think Perrier is French for flat Sprite. Also, I don't know French. So who knows, right? And I drink all of them. Perry's my favorite. I drink Pellegrino. I drink La Croix. <laughs> Everybody says it different. La Croix, La Croix. If you say La Croix, stand up and get the fuck out of this room. <laughs> you have no class. I don't know. Perry is my favorite. Perry is my favorite because it's like, I don't know. It's something about, something about that green bottle, that gold cap. It's like, it's like, I don't know. People treat you different. It's like a status symbol. You know what I mean? Like, it's just different. You nod your head, you get it. You gotta pick something, whatever your thing is gonna be, you gotta stay in that lane. Don't be trying to deviate. On weed, I try, I've tried to smoke, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not good. I don't know the law for real. Like, I live in LA and it's kinda, it's kinda, it's in that gray area, it's cloudy, you know? Nobody, cause you can like, you can like, you can be high, but they can't watch you get high. And you can have some, but you gotta keep your hand closed. Nobody knows is what I'm saying. <laughs> nobody, nobody knows. <laughs> What's in your hand? I ain't tell them. I tried to, I tried, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with it. I don't know who I am. Like, I get paranoid. And so I was, I was like, you know, but I, but I do want to like get, get better at it because like it's, one, it's cheaper. It's just way cheaper than, than drinking. And I was like, I asked my boy who has like a card, you know, go to the dispensary, grab, grab, uh, grab, you know, however much. And I was like, hey, uh, give me some. And I gave him like 20 bucks and he put some in my hand. I don't even know if it's the right amount because I don't know drug math. <laughs> he puts it in my hand, I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. That's about right. And so uh, I, he's like, I'm like, he's like, just go home and just like, you know, watch a movie and just relax, man. Just, you know, veg out, relax. I'm like, all right, cool. So I get a little pipe. I'm like 20, I'm at home, 20 minutes in. I am hot, I am hot, I am, I am, I'm watching Hunger Games. Man, let me tell you something. That is, <laughs> woo, that is a different movie when you high, okay? I was, oh my God, District 12 is going through it. I, and then when they kill Rue, not you too, Rue. It was, oh man. I was like, if you haven't seen the movie, they kid a little black girl, that is sad. It's like, oh. But I'm on the couch, I'm on the couch, and I haven't, I haven't even tried to smoke since like college. And so like, I didn't know what was gonna happen. So the symptoms start, my mouth, my tongue just, let me tell you something. My tongue just disappeared. <laughs> mouth dry as shit, my tongue disappeared, okay? And my mind is like, you should go to the kitchen and get some water. I'm like, that is a good idea, mind. And so I stand, so I, you know, I get up and immediately my knee's like, we done too. <laughs> and so now I'm standing, and for some reason, both of my hands are in my pockets. I got both hands in my pockets. My knees are locked, my mouth is dry. My mom's like, go to the kitchen. I was like, uh, I'm on my way. And I was like. <laughs> and now, let me tell you, your shoulder should never hit the floor first, okay? <laughs> Not when you got two good hands for bracing, all right? Because you can't explain that bruise later. People are like, how did you hurt your shoulder? You're like, um, I was smoking weed. So I, like, I had like a, little, like a little bit left. I was like, maybe, you know, I'm gonna just try it again just cause I'm about these deals and they say this money. <laughs> and so, you know, I got my water and 
I put it on the coffee table, and, and now I just, I'm just, uh, I'm, you know, laying out uh, pillows. <laughs> and my neighbor's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm getting ready to smoke weed. <laughs> How do you prepare? I hate, I hate shopping, hate shopping, love a bargain, hate shopping. Like this morning, I woke up, realized that I forgot some essential stuff, had to run to the drugstore, grab some things, toothbrush, condoms, hand sanitizer, you know, the essentials, okay? <laughs> Right, but I hate I don't, you know I don't like shopping because I don't like put my stuff on the counter because you know people you know cashiers ju you ever had a cashier judge you? You put your shit on the counter, you put it down, they do it like this. <laughs> like hey, for, hey, you don't make enough, okay? You don't make enough. Do not do not judge me right now, okay? Like you ever made a sexy purchase by accident? Like you made an accidental sexy purchase? Like you didn't even know what you was buying was sexy until the cashier alluded to you. Like what you was like recently, uh, like a couple months ago, I had to run into like a Walgreens, right? Grab two items. I knew exactly what I was getting. Ran in, grabbed and put them on the counter, right? Girl looks down at my items, looks back at me, she goes, oh shit. <laughs> right, I'm like, why is she looking at me like this, right? So I looked down at what I have, and it was like, you know, like a bottle of honey and some candles, okay? And she was like, I see what you about to do. I'm like, bitch, I got a sore throat and my power's out. You mind rapping this up? <laughs> my grandfather's the best. My grandfather's 78 years old, and this dude don't give a one he, one, he don't give a and two, he has Alzheimer's, so he have to remember the shit. Which sound, it does sound insensitive, like if you've been through it, like it's a little rough, but like, my grandfather, like he knows, like 50% of the time, like, he's all there, everything, he's all cylinders firing. Other, uh, like other half, he's like, he'll have an episode, but when he comes out of it, he's like, what I do this time? <laughs> I was in St. Louis, my cousin Gary picks me up, and he just tells me, he, my cousin Gary tells me, he's like, man, you know, grandpa is in this weird phase where he wants to try on all his old clothes from the 70s and show him off. I'm like, what is he doing? He goes, don't worry about it, you'll see. <laughs> right, so we pull up to the house, grab my backpack, grab my uh, carry-on, and uh, I'm like, you coming in? He goes, uh-uh, I've seen that shit. <laughs> so I get in the house, I'm talking to my grandfather for a couple hours, I mean, it's like two hours, everything's great, everything's great, he's remembering everything, he's asking about my career, he's like, what girl are you dating now? He's telling me about his day-to-day, -day. and I'm just like, oh man, grandpa's doing great. And I'm like, let's go to lunch. He goes, man, why don't you just go, I got, I got groceries, why don't you just go make some sandwiches? No problem. So I go in the kitchen and I'm just like pouring juice, pouring chips on a plate, and my grandfather just yells at me from the other room. Hey, Tony, will you get a second? Come check out this jacket. I don't think you've ever seen this jacket. It's a cold ass jacket. <laughs> All right, Grandpa, I'll be there in a second. Let me grab these sandwiches and this juice. And I'll be there in a minute, right? So I grab the sandwiches and the juice and I walk back in my grandfather's room. My grandfather's standing in the middle of the room, butt naked with a blazer on. <laughs> What you think? I was like, ah, damn. Ah, man, where your pants and your underwear? This is awkward. What if somebody walks in here and sees this? This ain't gonna look right. He goes, man, you're supposed to be looking at the jacket. <laughs> That's a nice jacket, but what if somebody says, this is not gonna look right, man. You need to put some pants and some underwear on or something. He goes, I'm trying to show you this jacket, and you look into my balls. I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't, I am now. Why your balls so long? You got long ass balls. Like, long, like tether ball long, okay? Like two eight balls in a tube sock long. <laughs> Lengthy. He get an attitude, man, you wish you had balls like these. <laughs> you know, long balls run in our family. I was like, first of all, that's gross. <laughs> Second of all, how you know that? <laughs> I'm like, Grandpa, man, do me a favor and put some pants on or some underwear on or something, because I would hate for you to be walking around the house and trip. That's the last thing I need. My grandfather walk around the house, balls wrapped around his ankles. He tripped, hit his head on the coffee table. Now he's passed out. I gotta call the police and the ambulance and explain this shit. And they get to the house, oh my God, why is your grandfather laying on the floor? Butt naked with a blazer on. Oh, I'm sorry, are these his balls? What am I supposed to say? Man, you're supposed to be looking at the jacket. I was like, I had to buy some stuff. I had to go to uh, Anchorage, Alaska. Never been to Alaska before. Okay, funny thing is, I didn't know where Alaska was. I thought I did, I didn't, okay? <laughs> I don't think you know where Alaska is. Like, I know it's up to the left, like I know it's up here, <laughs> right? But I had no idea how far the shit was. Like, like, my mom calls me, she's like, you never been to Alaska before, how far is that? I'm like, I don't know, from LA, about three hours. Let me tell you something, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> It is not three hours, okay? I'm on the plane about three hours, right? And I'm getting antsy. I'm like, man, this is not, we not coming down or nothing. 
Because here's the thing, I don't look at maps, I'm an adult, okay? <laughs> you know, last time I saw a map, I was looking at a uh, Verizon or at and commercial for coverage, okay? <laughs> And Alaska's on there, but it's not like a, it's like a selfie. It's like, it's like this, and Alaska's like, don't forget about us. <laughs> so I landed in Alaska, and the black population doubled. <laughs> and he was at the airport waiting on me with a sign, and she was like, oh, shit! I heard you was coming! He had a sign like I was, like I was coming home from war, you know what I mean? It was dope. Curtis, we hung out, it was cool, right? Took me around, showed me all the shit I needed to see. He was like, yo, this is the country western bar. Do not worry about going there, okay? Here's a courthouse, just in case. If something pop off, grab it like freeze tag, it's home base, okay? So Curtis drops me off with one of his white friends, right? Nathaniel, cool as hell. Uh, so like, you know, we're hanging out, we're talking, and uh, he tells me, like before my shows that night, he goes, hey man, uh, are there any subjects that you want to talk about. I'm like, no, let me know what I shouldn't talk about. He goes, well, you know, we're still kind of sensitive about that whole Sarah Palin thing. You might... I'm like, yeah, y'all should be embarrassed about that shit. <laughs> she fucked y'all up for a while, right? And then I go, you know, what else? And she so, he goes, um, he goes, you know, just, I don't know if you're gonna, you know, use this or not. You know, if I were you, I would not say the word, you know, use the term Eskimo. And I go, why? He goes, well, up here, the word Eskimo is like saying the N-word, it's like it's like saying the N-word. Go for real, he goes, yeah, man. He goes, the E-word. I'm like, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, man, saying the E-word is like saying nigger. And I was like, whoa, man, if I can't say Eskimo, you damn sure can't say nigger, okay? <laughs> Hold on, Nathaniel. Then I just went back to my childhood, I'm thinking like, oh shit, like, like I'm thinking about all these times I used Eskimo growing up, you're watching cartoons and stuff, right? And I'm like, oh, is this, if this word me is like equivalent, it's a lot of things in my life that have been fucked up. Like desserts I used to eat. <laughs> you telling me this whole time I've basically been eating nigga pies? Been in Hollywood for like uh, almost seven years now. And um, yeah, all my friends from home, I'm from Decatur, Georgia originally, right? So all my friends, you know, stuff's going well. So people always go like, hey man, don't go out there. Don't change, don't change. People always say that, don't change. Don't change. And I always say the same thing back, fuck you. <laughs> Because I didn't move out here not to change. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to change. Think I want to stay in the shit I grew up in? No, I'm trying to fucking change, okay? And not, not a whole lot has changed. Like, I, I still live the same lifestyle. I just like, I'm just kind of, I go back and reach for stuff I couldn't like afford in the 90s. Like now, I, just, like, I do like small stuff. Like I buy a lot of Klondike bars. <laughs> do you remember Klondike bars in 1993? Holy shit. My mom would, Val would never buy Klondike bars. They were too expensive, okay? You know what she did buy? She bought those shitty ice cream sandwiches that were 20 for $2. You know the kind that don't melt? You can leave it on the counter for three days, walk away, come back. It's still the same shape? How the fuck is this possible? This can't be ice or cream. What is this? They would not buy Klondike bars. And now that's honestly, like if you didn't, if you didn't know me, if you did not know me and you came into my house, opened my freezer, the only thing in my freezer is Klondike bars, okay? I took the ice out. Fuck ice. I'm trying to live my dreams right now, okay? If you didn't know me open my freezer, you would think I'm smuggling cocaine. It's just silver bricks all the way up. And I'm a great host. People offer you water or coffee, you go to their house. No, you come to my house, would you? I'll blow your mind. Would you? Would you like a Klondike bar? And people get weird, people, oh, what do I have to do for this? <laughs> Sit your ass down, take that rubber off, enjoy yourself. I've done the heavy lifting. When I was 12, I was going to a new school, all good elementary, Decatur, Georgia. And uh, I didn't know anybody. I, I was weird, I was like, I, I kind of was in this weird phase where like I was Probably, I was just like, I was husky. I wasn't chubby, I was husky, right? I was uncomfortable with the gap in my teeth. I felt like I didn't have right, the right haircut. I didn't, my parents couldn't afford like good clothes. So like I was just like, a, I had to be like some like jovial, like nice kid because I didn't have, I didn't have what other kids had, okay? I get to school, I'm in Miss Dillard's class. She's not even a cool teacher. <laughs> the only thing about Miss Dillard's class that was good is this, this girl that I, like, I was in love with, Natasha. She's the only reason why I ever wanted to go to school. Beautiful. Even now, 30, 30 year old me's like, she was bad. 
But I had a huge crush on her. The class everybody wanted to be in was Miss Jefferson. Miss Jefferson, redhead, probably 25. She was a cool teacher. She was a math teacher. Miss Jefferson had this little system in uh, an elementary school where, uh, you know, she had Jefferson, Jefferson Bucks in the Jefferson Bank. So, like, anytime you score, like, an A on a test or you, like, open the door for a little girl or, uh, or did something nice, anytime you were, like, cordial, did, this, did something nice, did something polite, you could earn a Jefferson Buck. At the end of the week on Fridays, you could take your Jefferson Bucks, buy candy, have extra, you know, extra time at recess or whatever you wanted to do. And so everybody, everybody that you wanted to earn Jefferson Bucks, okay? But I didn't have her every day. Only the homeroom class had her every day. So the homeroom class was balling out of control, okay? <laughs> The homeroom class, I mean, they, they had her all the time, so they're just making bucks at the bucks, okay? We, I'm, like, I'm making three, four dollars a week. <laughs> and I was like, I was like this is, it's, it's enough. I can't, I can't take it. I can't take it. Like, we're not getting enough. It's not fair. And so for weeks, I devised this plan, and I was like, man, I need to rob the Jefferson Bank. <laughs> So I had this whole plan worked out. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to lunch and I'm gonna leave the window cracked. Cause I sat next to the window. I left the window cracked just enough. The day came. Excuse me, can I go to the restroom during lunch? Hallways are empty. I slipped through the breezeway, I opened the window, hopped in, closed it, robbed the Jefferson Bank, filled my pockets up, went through the classroom door so I could be just be in the hallway like I'm coming back from the bathroom, locked the door, turned around, who's standing there? Goddamn Natasha. Standing right there. She's the only other person in the hallway. Looks at me. What you doing? Huh? <laughs> she goes, what's that? I look down. It's Jefferson Bucks popping all out of my pockets. <laughs> what's that? I'm like, nothing. And she was like, I'm going to need some of that. And I had to give it to her. I had to give, I had to give Natasha hush money. <laughs> so I emptied my whole left pocket, just gave it to her. Hey, be quiet, okay? You didn't see nothing. Take the money and go. <laughs> By the end of the day, she had told everybody. Told everybody. She got in trouble. I got in trouble. They called my dad. It was about to be over. I knew the woman was coming. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I decided to walk home. I was like, I'm gonna get some fresh air. <laughs> it was about a mile and a half walk. I didn't take the bus. Everybody knew, so I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna get teased on the bus. And uh, I got home and I was like, you know what? If I got three hours left to live, I'm gonna just do whatever I wanna do. And this is, I'm 12 years old, so you gotta imagine like, I just went, I just, I just got like, I got a bowl of ice cream. I went upstairs, I'm watching scramble porn, and I jerked off, I mean, <laughs> I beat my meat for hours, okay? <laughs> Tugging at it, going, I was going to work on myself. Nah, nah, I was going to work. Ran out of ice cream, going to get a refill. I go back downstairs, go back downstairs, right in front of the refrigerator. There's a chair in the middle of the kitchen, right in front of the refrigerator. And I walk in, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't put that there. <laughs> Open the freezer up. All I hear is my dad's voice. You go and close that. <laughs> you know what time it is. I close it. I'm like, how the fuck did you get in there? <laughs> go ahead and drop him. Drop my pants. I'm leaning over this chair. Leaning over this chair. My dad goes to work. I mean, he takes out this belt. He's, I mean, wailing. I mean, it's not even legal what he did now, what he did then, okay? He's fucking going to work, going to work. I'm like crying. He stops for a second. He goes, Tone, I turn around, I turn around. My father's standing behind me with a Polaroid. He takes a photo. There's <laughs> tears rolling down my face, my eyes are red. That's the last woman I ever got, last woman I ever got. Because every time I got in trouble after that, he never touched me again. He just had to put that photo on the fridge. <laughs> it, li it was like some Pavlov's dog shit. Like, whenever I saw that photo, I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Is it gonna, is it gonna happen again? 
the best part of it was years, like years after that, I mean, this is probably like five years ago from today. I'm in Atlanta, my best friend from high school owns a strip club in Atlanta called Magic City, okay? Magic City. Very great, great wings. And uh, we, I mean, everybody from high school, we all meet there, because it's convenient. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm sitting at the bar in Magic City, and I have a beer in my hand. I take a sip, and there's a girl dancing. And she's finishing up. This girl had a laundry basket, and she's like taking all, all her, you know, all her tips, and she's like putting them in the laundry basket to collect them. And then I catch, I catch a glimpse, I just catch a glimpse, and I'm sitting, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, And I, and I walk up and she's like finishing up. And she goes, can I help you? And I go, I'm gonna need some of that.